Hey, good morning and welcome to worship. Uh, glad you all could join us uh, on Facebook as well. Hello to all those folks on Facebook and uh, who will join us later. Um, a few announcements we have this morning. Uh, as always, look over your prayer list uh, and the birthdays. We have, a, uh, we have quite a few uh, going on. Please uh, bring in prayer for those folks. Um, volunteers needed. Um, we are Monday, August 7th through Wednesday, August 9th. Uh, is our vacation Bible school. Please see Miss Candace. Right here. Right behind me. Sorry, I, I'm not like my wife. I don't have eyes in the back of my head. <laughs> Woo, she can see it. Uh, Women on a Mission, Christmas in August. Please uh, support this. Uh, for uh, North American missionaries, July 30th through September 3rd is uh, taking donations. Uh, if you have any questions, see Miss Janice for that. Uh, Backpack Buddies, as always, need donations. Uh, it's a great, great uh, outreach. Our super seniors are meeting uh, this Tuesday, the 8th. Meet at the barn, 10 o'clock, cookout and games. If you haven't been, come. It's a great time. Um, meet and greet, uh, the Sunday social is going to be August 20th from 3 to 5 p.m. in the fellowship hall. It'll be refreshment, crafts, maybe some games. It'll be a fun time. Uh, that is headed up, I think. Miss Chris, are you heading that up? Yep, very good. A um, couple of other announcements. Uh, if anybody is interested in uh, seeing Todd's resume, we have some in the foyer in the back. Uh, there's plenty, plenty back there if you want to see his resume. Um, also, everyone should have one of these sheets for a deacon uh, nomination. Uh, the criteria is right here to be a deacon, 20 and 21 years or older. Two years church membership, you have to be a member for two years, uh, and do not vote or, or write down any of our current deacons. They already are in, and uh, we like to at least give them a year off <laughs> uh, before they serve again. Nominations will be taken August 6th and the 13th, so this Sunday, next Sunday, and you're going to vote on the 27th. Any questions on that? Reach out to your local deacon. How's that? Okay. If you guys would join me in a in a in a prayer this uh, well, hold on. I got two things, Miss Janice. Ma'am. Trial service. I'm sorry. Mention what? Trial service. Yeah. Yeah. Trial service. Okay. Okay, the trial sermon will be on the 20th for the members at home so they can uh, get, get in touch. You have to be present to vote. Okay, any questions? Miss uh, Linda. Thank you, Ms. Linda. And for those who didn't hear that, uh, Ms. Linda held up the nominate committee sheet. She's posting it on the board for everybody to take a look at and going to be voting on. We have at least 40 new faces on that list, so thank you, Lord, for that. Robert. Alan, Alan Price. Okay, Alan. Okay, Alan is Alan Price is asking for prayers this morning. Um, bad situation. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to put that all the way out there. But um, anyway, if you guys can join me in a, in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the day you've given us. Lord, we uh, thank you for all the opportunities that you place before us, and pray that. Uh, all that, uh, that you will make us the hands and the feet of your church. Uh, Lord, you've heard the request for prayer, and you know the ones that are on our hearts. Lord, please uh, just continue to bless this church and the folks in it, and, um, and may we feel your healing touch and, and feel your grace in, in, in the void. And for all these things, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
And there is a lot that is going on among us. Those that we love that struggle with transition in lives, with news that they have received. We have those who are ill. And the Lord God is with them. And he is also preparing with us. And preparing us. He has before the beginning of time. He has always been present. And he will be present in the future. Praise God. He is also with us in the midst of celebration and transition and changes in life. Praise God. We see death around us. We pray tonight for also life and rebirth. It is a cycle of life that we live in and we live in together. And we sing praises to a God that says, Thank you. But I ask you to, with that love you love me with, love your neighbor with. That is a God that we worship. Amen and amen. So let's confess ourselves to that God this morning. For our struggles in life, the challenges that we face, and confess our praise for the victories that we have won because we are His and we are with Him. I give you a moment where you are and then we'll come together and we will read our prayer and pray together. Take this moment between you and God. Will you join with me as we come together and speak prayer to God together? Lord God, the world is a difficult place. We fear so much. We want people to like us. And so we hold back on our proclamation of our faith. We don't want to offend anyone. But your love and presence are not offensive. They are empowering and healing. Forgive us when we are timid in sharing your grace, love, and joy. Forgive us for depending on your own spirit instead of yours. Send your Holy Spirit to us. Empower us. 
guide us, and direct us, now and forevermore. Amen. Will you bow with me in prayer? Father, words mean something. And there are times when many words need to be spoken. But this time is not one of those. Oh God, hear our prayers as we worship you and adore you and say we love you because you are with us both in spirit and in the person of each other as we, as family, brothers and sisters, worship this day. And may our bond with you and each other grow as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As our deacons come forward, as we prepare to join around the table together, remember this is a holy moment. A moment any time we gather around the table is a time God has brought us together to share things which give and sustain our lives. This moment is more special. It's more special because in the midst of it, God is truly there in the form of body and blood. And we are reminded of the ultimate things that give us life and sustain our lives. Grace, forgiveness, and love. This is the table that we gather around this day. Let us pray as we bless these elements. Father, in the ultimate understanding of your presence on this earth, we as your church gather to commemorate to remember, to fully acknowledge what you have done for us. As you give us strength and sustain us through your sacrifice of your body and your blood, may we always honor that sacrifice as we sacrifice ourselves for one another. Father, this day on this table, we ask that you bless these elements as you remind us of the presence that is always among us. Your Son, Jesus Christ, and His Spirit. Thank you, O God, for this great gift. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. They gather around the table that evening they set to partake of an ancient Jewish traditional meal. And in the midst of their remembering of their most ancient of pilgrimages to the promised land and the sufferings of their people, Jesus changed it all to make it a meal of a new covenant. The challenge to always remember him and the price he was going to pay 
with his body and his blood. Prepare yourselves to take this holy supper. For you take and eat. But our traditional response through the history of the church is this. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat.
On that night in the upper room, Jesus Christ said, This is my blood shed for you. It's the blood of the new covenant. Whenever you drink, eat this bread and drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. In tradition of the church, we say, The blood of Jesus Christ shed for you. Take. As our younger brothers and sisters leave, I invite you to take a moment to breathe, to reflect, to be. And breathe in the presence of God that is among us. Take that moment. I invite you to join with me now as we read from the book of Genesis, the 
or the 32nd chapter, verses 22 through 31. But during the night he got up and took his two wives, his two maidservants, his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He got them safely across the brook, along with all his possessions. But Jacob stayed behind by himself, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he couldn't get the best of Jacob as they wrestled, he deliberately threw Jacob's hip out of joint. The man said, let me go, it's daybreak. And Jacob said, I'm not letting go till you bless me. The man said, what's your name? He answered, Jacob. And the man said, but no longer, your name is no longer Jacob. From now on, it's Israel, God wrestler. You've wrestled with God and you've come through. And Jacob asked, and what's your name? The man said, Why do you want to know my name? And then, right then and there, he blessed him. And Jacob named the place Peniel, God's face, because he said, I saw God face to face and lived to tell the story. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a lot of words here. A lot of words. Words are valuable. Times they're costly. Sometimes though they are cheap because we use them so frivolously and we don't pull out exact meanings of what words are. You would think that we are getting smarter and our vocabulary is growing because Webster's unabridged dictionary seems to keep adding words over and over. They add words sometimes that we would say are not words. I mean, they add words that are made up, which all words eventually were at one time. They had words that are valuable to the generation at present sometimes. I don't know if this has been added, but I would value that it would be added. Some people actually credit me with creating this word. Good Googa Mooga. <laughs> it was in my senior yearbook under favorite sayings. I didn't say it. The yearbook staff put that under my picture. It's just a, an expression of excitement. Oh my gosh, what just happened? I've thought about taking it up recently just to inspire my two kids to say it. And now Bailey's shaking her head. Oh, that's not going to happen. Words are valuable. One of my favorite writers and preachers, Barbara Brown Taylor, years ago did a lecture and said how our vocabularies are shrinking. And when our vocabularies shrink, we miss the true meaning of words. This morning we're talking about this intrinsic inner desire for greatness. And when I say that word, each of you will probably think in your own minds of what a definition of greatness is and how to accomplish this. 
Jacob had that desire within him. He wanted greatness. We are told in Scripture he wanted it from the womb, aren't we? So much so that as he was born and his brother, his twin brother Esau came out first, Jacob was holding on to his heel, trying to pull himself to the top. And it always seemed that's what Jacob was trying to do. Reading the scripture, you visualize, at least I do, that Esau is this great behemoth of a man. Lives off the land, hunting, fishing. I dare say he probably kills the animal with his own bare hands. It's what it seems like. He has that smell that some would say of a man and some would say take a shower and put on deodorant. And then there's Jacob a planter, a gardener, a mama's boy Smooth skin, a very effeminate description of his complexion and his body tone. An intentional effort by the writer of Genesis to say he was less than, which would have been how that culture viewed masculine and feminine understandings of human beings. Just the writer. But Jacob was a fighter. A grabber. But in doing so, he became a swindler, a conniver. He lived by the beat of his own drum. His life was governed by that very, very definition. He fought everything because he had a definition of greatness that said, I have to be first. I have to be the one in power. I have to be the one that controls everything. And it's funny that as we read this, and I know and remember from the earliest days that we talked about Jacob's greatness. And I come to this story today that we just read and we say he wrestled with God and he was blessed. Let's look at the blessings that Jacob got. The first blessing, maybe, if you want to call it that, was his birthright. A birthright that legitimately goes to the first in line, the firstborn. That was Esau. Esau despised it. He really didn't want it for whatever reason. Maybe he didn't care about it. Maybe he didn't want the desire or the need to be in charge. Maybe he just wanted to do what he wanted to do. And so famished, Jacob gave him food and he said, Here, have my birthright, I'm hungry. And Jacob steals a birthright. And then there's something that may even be more important, which is a blessing. It's not that parents did not bless each of their children, but the blessing of the first is a little more important. And he wanted that. His father says to Esau, go out. Kill your favorite. Come back, bring the stew. That stew that only Esau can make. 
and I'm going to bless you. My vision's getting poor. I'm growing old. It's time that I give you your blessing. And as Esau is gone, Jacob panics. And Rachel says, Don't worry, honey, I'll fix this. And she devises a plan. And we may say that Jacob is a victim, but Jacob goes along with it. Jacob is a conniver. And Jacob goes along with it. You know the rest of the story. And he receives a blessing. Now, I think his father just kind of went along with it and didn't give the full force of the blessing. I'll explain that in just a moment. But he still gave the blessing. And when Esau found out, he was furious. I'm going to kill that little snake. And his father said, no, don't do it. And Esau made plans that when his father died, he would end Jacob's life. And it got back to Jacob. And as it got back to Jacob, Jacob worried again. But is it that what happens to us when we're willing to, to accomplish our desires and what we want at any cost. The world in which we create around us is the world that consumes us. And if we do that in our desire to be greatness, we literally will do anything for that greatness. And the world that is around us, people that see us, judge us in a variety of different ways. Some look at us and see the illegal, immoral, unethical acts that we have committed and they will look and judge us and say they're, they're no good. Others simply look at greatness. They look at wealth and they say, allow me to cozy up to that. And those that have received it somehow declare, I have been blessed. All because we have a skewed understanding of what greatness is and how incredibly immense it is. And then things, I believe, for Jacob change just a little, although it's almost impossible to go completely back to the beginning. He, he comes and he is leaving. And his father says, before you leave, come here. And there is where he receives that blessing. He receives a full blessing. And I believe it is something that speaks to Jacob, that begins to change him and transform him. He looks and he desires to put other things in his life that are good. He's willing to truly work for it. Even some of the unethical, crazy, insane things that he's asked to do. Work how many years for the love of a woman? Work how many years to develop the ability to take care of his family. Live through the deception of being lied to, being given one life, and then having to work to gain Rachel's love too, or at least permission to wed her. But he's living in that world. His 
mistakes of the past not fully leaving him, but he's there. He's chased by his father-in-law, comes to an agreement over sheep and rams and Leah and Rachel. And then his brother. As he lives in fear, as his brother comes to meet him with 400 men, not wondering what's going on, and he comes to this place. He sends his family on, his possessions on, and he is preparing to meet his brother. And here, he wrestles with God. Because he's been wrestling this whole time. He's wrestled with his demons. He's wrestled with his past. He's wrestled with grace that he has received. He is distrusting of others because the same lies that he has told have been told to him. He's dead and lived with the threats on his life and he is tired of running and it is time that he face what he needs to face. And so here as he sits camping at night, he grabs on to something. Now I'm going to challenge you to not worry about whether this literally happened or it was a dream. That's not what is important. What is important is he was wrestling and I can tell you without a doubt he was wrestling with God. Because in truth, it is what we always wrestle with. We will wrestle with grace and why. We will wrestle with loss and why. We should wrestle with blessing and why. We are always wrestling because we don't understand why everything doesn't go the way that we want it to. And for Jacob, it's because he doesn't truly understand that the greatness that he desires will never be his. And that he has to define greatness differently. He gained wealth from his father-in-law. Sheep and rams and ewes and camels he had it, and it wasn't enough. He had children and maidservants. He had two wives, and it wasn't enough. He had the blessing of his father and a birthright of his father, and it still wasn't enough. And he sits on the precipice of what he believes is going to be his own destruction at the hands of his brother. He's come to understand that that destruction would not be unjust because of his sins of the past. And he wonders, what do I have to do to get this blessing? And he is blessed. He receives a blessing much like his father Abraham. You remember that, Father Abraham? 
He receives that blessing. You're going to be the father of many nations. And he becomes the direct result of that blessing that was given to Abraham so long ago. He gives birth to Dan and Naphtali and all of the tribes of Israel through his wives and his maidservants. That was the blessing I hope for him that came that night. But in truth, that wasn't the real blessing. He received his brother's grace. He understood that greatness only comes when it comes with others. And it does. Greatness only comes when you're able to sit with your brother or sister and share love and grace. Greatness only comes when you're able to receive the blessing of people that will sit with you at some of your lowest moments, the most challenging times in your life, when they will come and sit with you and celebrate you and scream joy at the top of their lungs. Greatness comes when we quit trying to control and gain power and wealth, greatness comes when we share all of the abundance that we have one with another. You see, that truth is what is discovered when Christ comes and lives among us. You ever thought about that? The story of the healing when he comes and someone is suffering. And the first thing that he says is, Oh, hey, your sins are forgiven. When the lepers come to him and he heals them, and nine of them run down the street and one of them comes and says, Thank you. Healing comes is... He lives among people. He welcomes those who have never been welcomed in polite, polite society at all. You remember those people, don't you? Folks like Lazarus. Folks like Mary and Martha. Zacchaeus. Children are welcome to be in His presence, living among Him. Remember how He walked out. Remember as He was in the community, in the world, saying, Here, love each other. If I'm hungry, feed me. If I'm in prison, visit me. If I'm sick, because when you've done so unto the least of these, you've done so unto me. Go out to those whom you, in your own definition, are not great. And make them great. And it's not hard. Give them your presence. Jacob got to discover this. Beginning this day, the rest of his life. And in his family becomes realized in Joseph. You know that story, don't you? You could even possibly say Joseph may be the antithesis of his father. Brothers try to kill him, throw him in a well. 
Maybe it had been better to be killed, but instead they sold him to passers-by, becomes a servant in the land of people who hate his people, comes to our human definition of greatness, and yet still all Joseph is looking to do is help. To feed his people. And then ultimately, as his brothers come to him with the same fear that Jacob went to visit his, was going to see in his brother Esau. And we see forgiveness. A shadowing of the Christ, the Messiah that is to come. That in spite of what we've done to Him, that He would sacrifice His own life for us, showing us in fullness how to live, we find greatness. Not in our wealth and not in our power, but because of our belief in Christ and our family that we have. Not learning that we have to give away, but in learning to receive in spite of ourselves God's grace and love. We will always wrestle. There are always going to be moments of doubt that come in. And the places where we can go is to God to rely on His Spirit but to also humble ourselves for those that He has blessed us with to receive that love to receive that grace and truly fulfill that inner desire for greatness Amen? Amen. I invite you to stand today, to sing as we reflect, as you're invited to come to front if you wish, invited to think about what you share with us this day, but to turn it all over to God as we sing, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Let's stand as we sing.
interesting day when we will have to do something. We will try to do something, and I hope you'll join me. And she's going to go, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you're doing this. Ashley, I want you to come forward, and I want you to stand right here in the middle, if you will. Ashley's going to the hospital tonight at 6 o'clock. We hope, as they call, and they are going to induce. And so we want to bless her because this is a change and this is a challenge. And this is what we do because we are her family. So if y'all will gather close towards her, then we're going to do this as our benediction this morning. So will you repeat after me as we pray together? Father, before you, you, we bring Ashley, Ashley. a a mother to be. As the day goes on, we pray your blessing upon her. And may she know your peace as you are with her. And prepare her with all your might for the love that is about to pour forth from her. For this child that comes into this world is yours and is born into a family that will love it forever. May she know our support of the days to come. And may all be well. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.